All right, so you may or may not know that recently I released an instrumental track and an accompanying music video. Now, this was just an experiment that I did with the guys at Blackstar to basically put their travel guitar and Fly 3 amp through its paces. Now, if you haven't already seen the video, you can check it out in the top corner, and there's a whole vlog that accompanies that video on how I recorded it. But basically, in a nutshell, I put together the bass and drum track for a song I wrote at home, then I went to the NAMM show, and I recorded all the guitar parts on the road. All the rhythm tracks were recorded in a hotel room with a Fly 3 amp and the Blackstar travel guitar. And then the lead lines were actually cut in the middle of the Nevada desert under the blazing sunshine, which is actually the footage you see in the music video. So the actual lead lines you see me play in the music video were actually being recorded as the video was being filmed. So if you haven't already checked out that, please go and do so. When I released the song, I didn't really have any expectations on where it was going to go, but actually it's exceeded expectations and it's done incredibly well on both YouTube and Spotify. So thank you to everyone who's watched the video and streamed the song. It means a lot to me that you guys have taken the time to check it out and share it with other people. I'm really, really blown away by the response to it. And a bunch of people have reached out to me and asked how to play it. So in this video, I'm gonna show you guys how I played that song. We're gonna go through the guitar parts bit by bit, and then I'm gonna do one big playthrough at the end. If you want the tab for this, you can scroll down to the link and hit the button for my Patreon page. The full tab for this is over on my Patreon, so if you support the channel through Patreon, you'll get access to the tab for this, as well as the tab for every other lesson video that I post. So before I show you guys how to play the guitar parts from Carry On, I wanna to talk to you about how this song was written, recorded, and the whole process of how I released it. So this all came about as an idea between me and my friends at Blackstar to write and record a song that puts the Carry On Travel Guitar and Fly 3 Amp through its paces. So I laid down the bass track and the drums at home. Then I went to America for the NAMM show. And I took the Carry On Travel Guitar with me with the Fly 3 Amp. I recorded all the rhythm guitar parts in a hotel room in Las Vegas, which you can see in my NAMM vlog on the channel. And then I actually went out into the middle of the Nevada desert in the scorching heat and recorded all the lead parts. So all of those were recorded with the Fly 3 amp and the Carry On guitar with a microphone straight into an audio interface into my laptop. And then the lead tracks you see me playing in the video were actually the recording process. So the laptop was actually running and recording as I was filming the music video as well. So it was all kind of interlinked together. Once I came home, I mixed it and mastered it with something I'm gonna to talk to you about in a moment. And then I released it through DistroKid, which is an online music distributor, which gets your music in all the kind of major download and streaming sites. There's a link to that down below if you wanna check that out. So the mastering process is something that is a bit of a dark art. Now I'm an okay mix engineer. I can mix a song to a point where it sounds good, but mastering is something I've always struggled with. And that's why I'm gonna to talk to you about something today from DistroKid called Mixia. So DistroKid are the sponsors of today's video. And I'm gonna to talk to you about their brand new product, Mixia, which is their online mastering tool, which I use to master this song. And it is great. So Mixia is an online tool that DistroKid offer their users, which allows you to master any song. But the great thing is it's super simple. Now, all you need to do is sign up for an account. It's $99 for one year and you get unlimited masters for that. And there's some links down below on how you can get in there and check that out yourself. Mixia is a great way just to take your mixes and add that final sheen. This is especially useful if you're an independent artist with tight budgets, because while mastering and using a real great mastering engineer is an incredibly good thing to do, it can be costly. And not all of us have the budget to do that. So Mixia actually allows you to basically use this online tool to master your music and get those great, fully polished results at a much more affordable cost. So it's three simple steps. You basically take your finished mix, drop it in the file and upload it. You select your parameters and then you export your mix and there you go. And if you're a DistroKid user, you can then just upload that straight to your DistroKid account and get that finished master track in all the stores. So like I said, you can check out links down below to DistroKid and Mixia. Hit those links, sign up. It's a great service. I've been using DistroKid for a long time and this track is distributed via them and mastered with Mixia. I loved it. I found it much easier and much more intuitive than how I tried to master songs without Mixia. And I'll definitely be using this service again. So please check that out. All right, so let's dig into how to play my song, Carry On. So I'm gonna be using the Shergold Guitars Telstar today. That's plugged into the Blackstar Studio 10 6L6, and that's running via the Two Notes Torpedo Captor X. And the overdrive in the video is coming from the Turnham Ridge Overdrive. So what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna play 
each section. I'm going to teach you each individual section of the song. And then at the end, I'll just do a complete playthrough where I just kind of play along with the track and ride the volume on the guitar just to give you an idea of how all the different parts fit together. Like I said, there is a full tab file for this, which is over on my Patreon page. So if you scroll down to the description, hit the link for the Patreon and sign up for that, you'll get access to the tab file as well as all the tabs I do for every other lesson I show on YouTube. All right, so we'll start with the intro riff and the riff that kind of goes through the verse sections of this song. So this is made up of a few simple chord shapes. So I'm playing an A minor chord, a G, an F, and an E minor. So it's G major and F major. I'm playing these chords in that Jimi Hendrix style where we're playing a thumb and a triad. So I'm starting off with the A minor, and then we're going to the F and the G in the first pass. So the way I'm playing this is I'm doing this alternating run between the low E and then the triad. I'm also hitting the high E string from time to time as well. So obviously if you do or don't hit that string, it doesn't matter too much. It's quite a loose riff. So I'm going. So that's a downstroke on the root note and then an upstroke on the chord. Then I'm playing the root note again and then doing this little lead line. So I'm playing the root, a double stop on the fifth of the D and G, and then I'm hammering onto the seven and pulling off again of just the G. And then landing on the seven of the D. Going to the F, so that's just the root and then the chord, and then strumming the G chord. Now while I'm holding that G, I'm picking the root once more, then I'm picking the fourth fret on the G, which my middle finger is playing, and hammering on to the five with my little finger, and then picking the B string, which is on the third fret, which my first finger is already playing. So here's that in full. The second repeat is the same at the start, so the A minor bar is the same. But the change happens in the second bar when we go to the F chord and we just strum it twice. And then to an E minor. And then to a G. So the rhythm of that is... So I'm hanging on that E minor chord slightly longer. So here's how it sounds if I play through that entire riff. So that goes on as my kind of main riff. That's happening in the intro, happens at the end of the song, it also happens through what are the verse sections of the song as well. Over that, there's a little lead line. Now this lead line is in the key of A minor. This is quite a simple lead line. It starts off with a repeated phrase that has a different ending each time. So the part of the phrase that repeats is the first part, which goes like this. So to play that, I'm sliding into the seven of the D. I'm not really having a starting note, I'm just sliding to that. I'm playing the five on the G and the seven on the D again. The seven on the G up to the nine with the slide. And then I'm playing seven, five, four on the G. So that repeats four times and then there's a different ending on each one. So the first ending is this. So that ending is 4 and 5 on the G, and then 5 on the D with a slide up to the 7. The second ending is the same thing, but we're doing 4 and 5 on the G, and then sliding the 5 to the 7 on the G. The third ending, we're playing 4 on the G, sliding to the 8 on the B, not really from a starting note, just slide up and then land on the 7 of the G. And then 
the fourth ending, we're playing the four on the G, and then I'm doing this bending phrase on the G. So I'm playing the seven on the G, bending it up a semitone, but then as I release it, I slide it up to the eight and back. So my hand is kind of going in this triangular motion. It's up, down and forward, and then back. And then while that note is sustaining, I'm pulling off to the five. You're playing it quite quick. It's almost like a little flick of the wrist. So it's the same thing four times with different endings each time. So here's how that sounds in full. That then goes straight into the first guitar solo. Now this starts with a slide to the seven on the D and then the fifth fret on the G. And we've got this bending phrase. So this is kind of like that lick I showed you in the previous bit. We're starting off on the seventh of the G with a bend up, down and back up again without re-picking. Add some vibrato to that. And then while it's up, I'm re-picking it and then doing that triangular motion. But instead of just pulling off to the five, I'm hammering back onto the seven. Then I'm going back to the five on the G, I'm playing five, seven, bend again, and back to the five. Pre-bend this time and release to the five. Then a descending run. So this is kind of like a slinky slide kind of run here. So we're doing a pull off from the seven to the five on the G and then on the D. Slide the five back up to the seven on the D and then play the five again. Then we've got this kind of little faster bit. We're sliding from the seven down to the five on the A, pulling off to the three, hammering back onto the five and sliding up to the seven. Five on the G hammer on five to seven on the D. You'll notice as I play it naturally, I kind of use different fingerings to how I explain it. It's one of those ideas that I kind of improvised with. So you can use your own kind of finger arrangements for that. It's really like the groove of it is important. We're doing like a faster slide on the first bit and then a slow one back up. It's quite a loose part, so obviously you don't have to play it exactly as I'm playing it, it's just an idea. There. Then we're jumping up to the fourth shape of the pentatonic. With this lick, we're sliding up to the 14 on the G string, the 13 on the B, doing a bend and release on the 15. Coming back to that 13 and then bending the 15 again. Then we're doing a run on the E, 12, 13, 15, 17. Then 15 and 13 on the B. A pre-bend here on the 15 we're releasing, pulling off to 13, and then 14 on the G. With that pre-bend release, you can really kind of hang on to that. You'll notice I even occasionally hit the wrong string and you get that kind of screaming sound. That's almost like an intentional error that I'm doing there. Then we've got the final phrase. This is not the most difficult phrase, but the way I've applied the phrase is quite tricky because I'm doing a few weird movements in there which may not be that natural under the fingers. But I'll play the phrase first and then I'll break it down. So the start of it is quite self-explanatory. It's a nice, easy descending minor pentatonic thing. Bend on the A of the B. Five on the E, eight and five on the B. 
bend the seven on the G, five on the E, bend the seven on the G again, then I'm doing the eight on the G, slide down to the seven, pull off to the five. So that's the easy part. The second part is where I get a bit weird. I'm doing slides here in places that you'd probably do hammer-ons. So what I'm doing is I'm playing the eight on the B, bending the seven of the G and playing the five. The five on the B, I should say. Slide from the eight to the seven on the G and pull off to the five. That's just a quick slide there. Then I'm doing a pull off from seven to five on the D and then sliding back to the seven. While that's sustaining, I'm sliding back to the five, back to the seven. And then I'm doing a quick hammer on from the five to the seven on the D to finish. So here's how that solo sounds in full unaccompanied. Next up we've got the pre-chorus, so the rhythm part for this is just those Hendrix chords played again, so we've got F. So the rhythm there. Notice I'm pretty much just strumming the chords except for that time where I hit the bass note and then separate the chord out. Followed by two muted notes at the end, then I'm just going to the G and doing the same thing. Then back to the F. Then E minor to G this time, same rhythm. So let me just play through the first part of that again. So that's the first four bars. So we've got F to G. Then we've got another bar of F and another bar of G. Then I'm coming up to the C chord at the eighth fret and going to B minor after that. Then to E minor. And then F and G. So it's slightly different on that last one. So it's C, B minor. And then the two muted notes, E minor. So that's a strum, the root note, and then three strums. F, two muted notes, G, two muted notes. So here's that chord part for the pre chorus in full. Over the top of that, we've got a melody line. Now this is kind of like a drone line here. So we've got the high E string ringing open and fretted notes on the B string. So the first part is the eight to the 10 on the B as a slide with the open E ringing. And then for the rest of the bar, I'm picking 16th notes, 10 on the B, open E. So you think of this as 16th notes all the way through. So it's one E, is the slide, and then it's and a, uh, and then it's two e and a, uh, three, four. The second bar is the same thing, but we're going up to the 12th fret on the B on the final beat. The third bar is the same as the first bar. And then the fourth bar changes slightly. 
So changing the rhythm here slightly as well. So I'm playing 13 on the B, open E, 13 on the B again, then 12, 13, 12, and then down to 10. So the 10 is picked as the normal rhythm. So here's the first half of that played. The third and fourth bars are just the eight and the ten. And then the final two bars is like a build up now into the chorus, so it goes like this. So to play that, we're starting on the 13 of the B and we're doing that three note pattern as we descend. 12, 10, 8. So we're playing the B, E, B. Then we're playing the 8 on the B with the open E and sliding up to the 10, but playing that again twice more. So it's slide and then two more hits with the E ringing both times. Then we're doing an ascending run then, so 12 on the B, 13, 15. So here's that pre-chorus melody in full. So even though it seems like quite a simple pattern, there's a few little tricky bits in there because you're kind of changing rhythms and note groupings across the bar. You're still playing 16th notes all the way through, but going from groups of like four to three. So it can be a little bit tricky to get used to. That feeds straight into the chorus then. So this is the big heavy rock riff that goes like this. <laughs> So there's a lot going on in this riff. We're starting with an A power chord. Two strong hits of the power chord, two palm muted root notes and another strong hit. Followed by this descending run. So it's slide to the seven on the D, five, seven, six, five, three on the A, five on the E. Third fret power chord. So it starts on the G, but it goes to the C for that final one. So you've got the two hits on the G, followed by two palm muted roots, then the C, then another run. So this is three, four, five on the A string, three on the D, five on the A, three, five on the D. Now in those riffs, you can play some pull-offs in there, or you can pick every note. When I recorded the song, I picked every note, but I do find myself playing some pull-offs from time to time, like for instance, or, or hammer on there, for instance. You can do that and that will work just as fine. So here's those two bars. Then we got the tricky bar. So this was my kind of Richie Kotzen inspired bar. So we're starting off on the first fret with the F power chord. That same rhythm, so two strong hits, two palm roots and another hit. Then we got this tapping run. It's a lot easier than it looks. It's actually just these notes. A minor pentatonic. We're basically doing a pull off from the seven to the five on the G, D and A strings, but we're doing a tap note. So what we're doing is we're hitting the 12 with our index finger or whichever finger you use to tap. We're pulling off to the seven. Then we're doing it again and doing the full. So the first one's like a quick one. So we're going 12, pull off to seven, 12, seven, five. 
And then we're just going 12, 7, 5 on the D, and then the A. There's kind of like a bounce to it. It's not that hard once you get your head around the technique. The hardest part is going from from the riff to the tapping part. The tapping part's actually not that hard. The index finger is just going. It's quite a simple rhythm there. And then the other hand's going. So even though that sounds quite tricky, it's not as hard as it seems. Then we're going. 3rd fret power chord, 4th fret power chord. Both on the low E string. So here's that riff in full. On every second repeat of the chorus as well, it's exactly the same, but the only difference is instead of doing this at the end, do the same thing but with F and G. So it's the same riff, but you're just ending it with the F and G on the second repeat every time. So at that point in the song, there's a couple of repeated parts now as we go into the sort of second verse and second chorus section. Fast forward now to the main guitar solo. So the backing for this is really simple, it's just power chords. The backing for the main guitar solo goes like this. <laughs> So it's an A power chord, a G power chord up to a C. Now I'm playing the C there for no reason other than that's just what I did when I recorded it. You could just drop to the C on the A string. But for some reason it felt more natural and more cohesive for me to go to the low E string. Then it comes back to the F. And then it does the G to the G sharp. It's quite a simple rhythm there. That repeats a few times under the main guitar solo. All right, now onto the main guitar solo. So this starts with a slide to the seven on the D. Two big bends on the seven on the G. Then this descending run. So there's that little slinky thing again. With the pull off to the five, it's that lick that I've been doing all the way through the song. Seven on the D, five on the G, and then seven on the D twice more. Then I'm going five, seven on the A, seven on the D, seven on the A. Five on the D with a slight quarter tone bend. And then a big downward run. So let me just play that first part again because there's a lot to take in here. The downward run goes like this. I say downward run, but it also comes back up. So the run goes like this. So there's a couple of different things here. We're doing a quick slide from the seven to the five on the A with a pull off to the three. I'm going to the five on the A. Quick slide back to the seven on the A again. And then it's three and five on the A, five on the E, three on the A. Slide to the 7 on the A, 5 on the D, 7 on the A. Then 5 on the G with a quarter tone bend, pull off 7 to 5 on D. A quick bend and release on the 7 of the G with a pull off to the 5. Pick the 7 of the G twice. So let me just play through that slowly. So here's the first part of the solo while we're all the way down there in the lower part of the A minor pentatonic. Then we 
we're coming back up to the fourth position, so I'm sliding to the 14 of the G, and I'm playing 13, 15, and 13 on the B. And I've got this bending phrase. So that's 15 on the B with a full step bend, and then 15 on the high E with my little finger underneath it four times. And then on the final time, bend and release that 15, and play the 13 on the B again. And then the final run there is a bend on the 15 of the B. I'm playing 12, 13, 15 on the high E. Bend that 15 on the B again. Then play 15, 13 twice. And then we've got the final phrase of the solo. Now, I may have transcribed this slightly wrong because again, I did improvise this, so I've got this as close as to what I think I played on the recording. So I'll play the phrase in full first of all, and it goes like this. So, kind of a Jimmy Page-ish kind of fast slur thing going on there. So what I'm doing is I'm bending the seven of the G, five on the E, and then a pull off on the eight to the five of the B. Then I'm doing this repeated phrase that I'm playing seven on the G, five on the B, and then I'm pulling off the eight to the five again and playing that twice. Then I'm going five on the B, eight, seven, five is a pull off on the G. Seven on the D, seven on the G, five on the G. Sliding the 7 up to the 9, 8 on the B, sliding the 7 back to the 9, that's on the G. So it's kind of a lot going on there. So let me play that slowly. Now, when I was playing that, I really was just kind of going for that Jimmy Page kind of slur thing. So if you learn that exactly as it is, it will sound pretty close. It might not sound exactly like what I played because I don't think I was playing strict 16th notes, but that's how I've transcribed it. So it should sound roughly like this at full speed. Then there's like a little bending lick, which I kind of did by accident, which goes like this. So I'm doing four quick bends there on the seven of the G. On the final one, I'm doing a release. On the fourth one, I'm doing a pull off to the fifth of the G and then landing on the seventh of the D. And the final phrase is kind of like this country bend. So that's eight on the B with a bend on the seven of the G and back to the eight on the B. Then a pull off from the seven to the five on the G. Seven on the G again with a quick slide up to the eight, back to the seven, pull off to the five. And then seven on the D twice to finish. And then if you play that entire kind of fast final run in full, it should sound roughly like this. Alright, so now I'm going to play through that solo unaccompanied, so it should sound like this. So that's kind of the gist of it. Obviously, like I said, there's a few little phrasing things there that if you're learning it exactly might not quite add up because they did improvise it on the spot. But that's pretty much the gist of what I'm playing. That solo then goes into a clean midsection. So the first chord we're playing is an A sus2 chord. So this is like an A major chord with an open B string. So I'm playing this pan. So that's A, D, A, G, and then 
D, A, D. That's your first bar. The second bar is A, D, A, B. And then G, A, D. So together. Then we come to a C chord, but I'm only playing the A, D, and G strings. So that's the same picking pattern as the A sus2 chord for the first bar. Then I'm sliding that up then to a variation on a D chord. It's kind of like a C chord, but at the fifth position. And there's a different pattern here, so we're playing A, D, G, D. And then B, G, D, A. And that's all there is to that section. So that in full sounds like this. And the final riff we need to learn is the riff that comes in after the clean section, which is kind of like a heavier groove riff, which goes like this. So this riff, there's a lot of muted hits here and there, so it starts off with two big muted percussive hits. Then we've got two hits on the A power chord. Third fret on the low E with a pull off to the open, five and three on the A. So it's two power chord hits, pull off from the three to the open on the E, five to three on the A. Then we're playing three and four as power chords rooted on the low E. So that first part is kind of like our riff that happens every time and the endings change. So that's our first ending. Pay attention to the space there as well, the space is very important in this riff. The second ending, we're doing like an extended power chord here, so I've dropped the third fret root down to the second fret, but I'm still playing the five on the A and D strings, and then I'm going to the three. The third time is the same as the first time. Then we've got our ending, which comes down to the F power chord. So it's chord, root, chord, root, root. Then that extended power chord twice. And then G. Two muted hits. So the full riff. point in the song then it just goes into an outro which is actually the intro riff with the intro melody in there as well so it's quite a simple way to end the song so that is all the segments of the song carry on so like i said you can get the tab for this in my patreon if you scroll down hit the link and sign up for my patreon page you'll get the tab for this as well as everything else i've done I'd love to hear how many of you guys have fun learning this one. If you have fun learning this and you want to upload your own video of you playing this please do so and send me the link like I said, I'm blown away by the response to the song so far. It is creeping up on the views. The views are doing pretty well. I'm really pleased with, you know, how many of you guys have watched this and all the positive feedback. There's a lot of streams on Spotify this track as well. So I'd love to see some of you guys learning this. And if you do uh, decide to do it and you, you know, throw it up on socials or throw it up on YouTube, please tag me in it. Please send it to me. I'd love to see you guys playing along with this one as well. So I'm just going to round this out now by playing through the entire track with the backing track. I'm going to leave some of the rhythm 
tracks on there because I'm just going to primarily play the lead bits over the top just so you can get an idea of how all this fits together. Thank you guys so much for watching. Please hit the like button, the subscribe button, and let me know how you got on learning some of these riffs as well. Thank you guys so much for watching as always, and I'll see you very soon.